Hello, this is Rev. Don Lewis, and welcome to Living the Wiccan Life. In our new season, we plan to bring you many more interesting interviews with some of the fascinating people from our pagan community. Among the interviews we have for you are Ellen Dugan, Mary Greer, Donald Michael Craig, Holly Allender, Yvonne Conway, Orion Foxwood, Kirk White, Margot Adler, and Shujana Budapest. In this episode, we bring you interviews with Christopher Penzik and Deborah Blake. I hope that you enjoy them. Thank you. Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis, and we're here today with Christopher Penzik, the author of many books, the most recent of which is The Temple of High Witchcraft. I got it right that time. You got yes. it right, Very yes. good. <laughs> How many books have you written altogether? Um, I believe that's my 12th. That's very good. 12 books down and a couple in production right now. And you, you have done that over the course of, what, 10 years? Uh, 2008, eight, year, eight years in eight print. Years. Probably started writing in 98, so about 10 years. Very good. Yeah, yeah it, takes a lot longer to get, it takes a lot longer to get published than from when you write it. <laughs> <laughs> At least the first one. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my impression of your books is that what makes them unique is that they are a, a very coherent system that does not really depend on outside things to understand it, but makes everything part of a single whole. Mm -hmm. I and that. Um, I think that's a very good thing. I think it's one of the things we most lack in our community. People who, who look at, at Wicca and, and the larger pagan movement in a coherent way. Uh, do you want to say anything to that? Well, I really try to write the books that I wished I had as I was starting out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of supplemental suggestions because I don't want to think anyone to think that my word is the last word on any subject. Um, but I know a, a lot of books would just kind of touch upon a subject or give you part of it, or you could tell you know, that they were speaking between the lines and not giving you the full formula. If you didn't have a teacher, you didn't really know what they were talking about. And I tried to do away a lot with all that in my writing. I really tried to give the textbook. And many of the books actually are the textbook for what I teach, and that's how they evolved. I don't usually start around and think, well, what would be a good topic for a book? I try to think of what's a good topic for a class. I teach the mm -hmm. class, and then after I've taught the class for a while, then I write the book on it. That's very practical. Yeah, I try. <laughs> You plugged in the right hole. <laughs> it's early in the morning. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to tell us a little bit about the Temple of High Witchcraft? Sure. Well, the Temple of High Witchcraft is the fourth in the series, the Temple of Witchcraft series. And it's basically my most serious teachings. Um, I started out teaching just basically different levels of witchcraft based on the elements instead of doing the, the typical three degree system because it's not a, mm. a British lineage initiation system. I'm not taking, there's no Penzacians or anything like that out there. <laughs> um, although some students try to use that, but um, what I really wanted to do was just kind of uh, give the students a really good grounding in um, witchcraft metaphysics um, from the inner work that started mm. with the first book through what most people think of as Wicca and the ceremonies and the Wheel of the Year and the Spellcraft. Uh, the third book really got into the shamanic aspect of things. And the fourth one is really the toughest one to tackle and it's the toughest one to teach for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. really gets into the influence of Kabbalah and ceremonial magic on the witchcraft movement mm -hmm. and really tries to show, well, these are the principles behind it and these are the things that can serve us. These are the things that have influenced us and, and to kind of be honest about where some of our things come from. I still mm -hmm. think it's witchcraft, but there's a lot of phrases, terminology. There's a great debate now mm -hmm. on, you know, where did Gerald Gardner get his material and how much did the Golden Dawn and Aleister Crowley influence him? And, mm -hmm. um, and I think those are good things to look at honestly, and then if they're part of our tradition already, try to understand them and, and make mm -hmm. them our own. And um, Even if you don't, I always tell my students who take the class that the book is based on, even if you choose not to practice this way, it's mm -hmm. really good for your education as an occultist to know about it. Mm -hmm. So basically each lesson in the book goes through one of the spheres of the Kabbalah, really through a pagan lens. Um, mm -hmm. It talks about the god forms that are associated with it, it talks about the ritual tools, um, it talks about the spiritual lessons. I'm mm -hmm. really into, for the Kabbalah, um, the visions of each of the sephira and mm -hmm. what are the virtues and the vices and how you kind of go through that whole process. Um, and then there's a different type of ritual that I associate mm -hmm. with it. Some of the ones are the ones that are very familiar, like the Lesser Vanishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Mm -hmm. And not only do I teach that, but then I try to get into um, how do you deconstruct it? I'm, I'm strangely influenced, even though I try to be very coherent and ordered, very strangely influenced by chaos magic. <laughs> it's the ethos of chaos magic, like take it apart, what's the skeleton of it? Mm -hmm. Why does it work? Why would you do it? And then if the flesh on it doesn't quite suit you, mm -hmm. like the Judeo-Christian names, 
you know, then how can you build it up so it fulfills the same function, if that's a function that you need, yet in a mythos that really works for you? So we deconstruct a lot of the rituals and really build them back up in our own personal mythos. And, and I give mm -hmm. the traditional version, I give my version, and then I encourage the student to practice one of those, and then once they've got the idea of it, to figure out their own version. I, th I think you hit on a very important point, and that is that so many people in our community do not seem to look below the surface sometimes to understand why certain things are what they are. Right. And um, when we were talking earlier about your work being coherent, I think that really is the quality that makes it coherent. Thank you. Um, so we're here at Pantheacon, yes. and you were saying earlier this is one of your favorite events. This is one of my favorite events, hands down. It's um, probably one of the first festivals I've done as a, a speaker when, I, when one of my first books came out. So I always have this nostalgia. This is like my first adult business trip as an author. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. It was just, it's a really great place. It's one of the few places that I can go as a speaker where there's 40 other really high quality speakers. Some of them are mm -hmm. authors. Some of them are local people who you wouldn't know unless you came here. Yeah, the class consistency, the level of education, the participation, it's all just really great. And that's the education aspect of it. Then there's a whole social aspect of the, the festival as well. So there's parties to go to, and there's rituals that are more um, fun than introspective. And, and there's just a little bit of everything for everybody here, and, and you can have whatever type of experience you want. So that's what I like about it. Some years I come out here to just take classes and to study and to teach. And other years I come out here to meet up with friends and hang out. And it's just, it's really good, just a high quality. You know, and it's great because it's an indoor festival because the outdoor mm -hmm. festivals often get rained out. So you know, <laughs> rather than slogging through the mud trying to teach, it's nice to be able to know I can go back to my hotel room and take a shower. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> the outdoor ones are fun too. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm down on them. The most, the vast majority of festivals I do are outdoor festivals, and mm -hmm. I love them. But that's nice but to have something. But indoors are nice too, especially in February. Yes, I come from a very cold oh. state. I live in New Hampshire, and we have miles and miles of snow, and you know, it's piled up in my yard. And, and I'm very excited to be here where the grass is growing. <laughs> So what, what is your next thing? Um, in terms of releases? Releases, tours, uh, events, whatever you would like to promote. Um, I'm really trying to finish up the Temple of Witchcraft series. Originally it was supposed to be a five book series for the five mm -hmm. elements, and uh, I turned in the last volume and it was immense. And so I had a nice little discussion with my publisher who was very gracious about me not cutting it down, but we decided to release it into two volumes. So that would be six books, and I thought, well, six is kind of an odd place to end. So uh, I, I ended up doing a book of shadows. I'm in the process of writing a book of oh. shadows to inspire people to make their own more detailed book of shadows based on the series. So the, the one through six books for the, for the elements um, are really going to be the practice and the theory and the techniques and the exercises. And then the book of shadows is the flavor in which I practice. And then so hopefully it'll inspire other people to see how I put those techniques to use in my own practice. So that's, that's the goal of this year. I've got volume five, the, uh, the fifth book, volume one, and volume two done. Um, and they're in production now, and I'm hoping to get the Book of Shadows done soon. Um, I've got a love magic and a money magic book that I'm working on to, to fulfill. Everybody will love that. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> those are kind of gateways, though. You know, yeah. when you have the sign up that says you're a professional witch, you know, metaphorically or literally, the people come to you, they come for your protection stuff, which mm -hmm. I wrote, The Witch's Shield, to kind of serve that. that need and then they come for love and money and that, that kind of divination. So I wanted to kind mm -hmm. of give some self-help tools for people who might not be as in-depth in the spirituality mm -hmm. but are looking to change their lives and maybe that'll be a door to get them deeper. Very good. And uh, the big news is that I'm hoping to actually start up, um, I'm in the process of researching and speaking to legal people and, and all that, um, to do some type of mystery school or seminary. Uh -huh. So really the, the big role in my work is um, really training priestesses and priests. So I'd like to have some type of, of institute set up that gives them the legal support and protection and I'm doing all that. But as a pagan, as I'm sure you know, as a pagan institution <laughs> trying to deal with government agencies, you know, it's, it's tougher than you think. So I want to make sure everything is all set. So I've got a wonderful pagan friendly lawyer who's helping me through it all. And mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure it's all set before anything goes official. I don't want to do anything half-assed. So um, mm -hmm. that's really the goal of this year is try to really understand the logistics of it and get all the business going. Oh, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Now, if, if people want to find out more about you, um, or maybe even contact you, mm -hmm. uh, would you care to give your, your if you have a website or yep. so right. forth? The website is just ChristopherPenzak.com, um, and it's Christopher, P-E-N-C-Z-A-K.com. Um, and it has my contact info and an email that goes directly to me. A lot of people ask, go, oh, who answers your email? I answer my email. I wish I had someone answering my email, but <laughs> I answer my own email. Um, there's forums on there for people to ask questions of not just me, but other people who are students of mine and people who are reading and working through the books. 
Um, mm-hmm. I do have a MySpace page, so that's a place where a lot of people get to connect with me as well. It's just the MySpace slash Christopher Penzac. Um, so those are all ways I'm pretty accessible. You know, if I don't get back to somebody right away, it's usually because I'm on the road. So, but those are the best ways to find out about new releases, um, you know, touring information, class information. I teach around the whole country, so you know, I'm probably somewhere near you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Blessed be. Blessed be. I hope that you enjoyed our interview with Christopher Penzik and that you'll stay tuned for our interview with Deborah Blake.